somebody said in the in the joint um in in upstate that your music is like people you your name rings bells uh throughout the the system uh in, in upstate just based on the music and the street is what i heard um well, maybe back that, goes, that goes that goes because my town is real heavy in the prison system you okay. know what i'm saying my city like is very very heavy and dominant in new york state prison system okay you know what i'm saying so it, it's like anybody from any part of new york once you go to new york state prison system you actually have to learn about my city but they never knew about us before until they go there. So when they go there, they learn about my city. And when you learn about my city, you're going to learn about the people that's in my city. Yeah. And, you know, and that's just how that shit go. So that's the way that goes. So the people that's in inside of the prison, that's from my city. Be very dominant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 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 so that, 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 that's how, you know, people names travel and shit throughout the state and things of that nature. So they always <laughs> comparing us and shit too. You know what I'm saying? Because, People from New York think that they're the only ones that always had rappers and shit, and you know, motherfuckers be having to let them know. Plus, I sent a lot of music throughout all the prison penitentiary. I sent everybody that I knew that was in jail tapes so that they could let motherfuckers know and shit. If you was in jail when I knew you, I looked your den up and I just sent you tapes, even if I ain't heard from you. Everybody that I knew, I just sent them tapes, sent them tapes, anybody that was in prison. And I was doing that shit for a little bit of period of time, so that helped out a lot as well. So. Hmm. Niggas had shit to actually back up and validate what they were saying when they was bragging about how nice we was and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I probably got a lot of tape inside of the, the New York State Penitentiary. You know what I mean? When 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 you was down, did you have to kind of guard yourself against uh, what now people would call clout chasers? Um, people trying to come maybe for your head because they feel like they can get a bigger rep. They go at uh, special. It's like, man, like, you know, and when you mind your business wherever you go, you really don't have no problem with nobody. Mm -hmm. It's when you actually want to mind other people's business or look for acceptance is when you're going to always run into issues wherever you go. That's real talk. They put you in a jungle. If you go and worry about what the lions is doing and you're not a lion, you might fuck around and get fucked up. You heard? It don't matter what habitat or environment that you in. If you mind your motherfucking business, you're going to survive. So I'm telling that the niggas that think about going to tell on their peoples because they facing some time and shit. I need them to know that they're going to be all right when they go where they're going to go. Just mind their business. We ain't got to tell on anybody and put everybody in jail. Just go sit down, mind your business, and you're going to come home. Yeah. You know? I think Here you said that one of your cuts, uh, when you're a wolf, the only way that they get you is when you're counting sheep. And so counting sheep. Same time I always keep with me, and um, you talked about snitching, and we're gonna get um to this to this song because I want to talk about this song later. But block food, you you came off real aggressive when you said if you put somebody in jail, I hope you die soon. You know what I mean? I agree with that. Very aggressive bar you laid that down. Looked right into the camera, um, and I I felt that when you when you said that on the track, we talked about the Kooji rap thing. Just going back to that, was there any nervousness at all when you met G-Rap? Nah, not at all, man. I know how good my pen is, so I know if G hear me. I, listen, man, anybody that's a fan of music and, and fan of lyricism, I have no nervousness when I meet them. Hell yeah. 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 Yes. So, I'm coming in. So, yeah. So um, anytime I get around lyricism, man, I ain't got no, no issue or no, no, no fear. I know that when they hear this shit, they about to be motivated. I know where my shit comes from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I get around any rapper that that I know like lyricism. That's my playground. That's my comfort zone and shit. I can't wait to 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 to, to, to let them hear what I got. Whoever it is, you know what I'm saying? And I know we bouncing around a little bit. We spoke about. The, the the trip you took i just want to for the people out there that might have the, the same kind of experience when you when you came out did you find yourself to be in any ways kind of institutionalized like you didn't want to be around people and go in these big box stores or kind of adhering to the same kind of mentality of the code that you was messing with when you was inside was you institutionalized nah, man first off i didn't do that much time i only did a couple years that's not no time okay like i got people that do real time yeah. and shit. That, you know what I'm saying? I'm more affected by the streets than prison. You heard? Got you. 
Now you you once talked about I forget what video it was. You was you was talking. You talked about taking everything to the plug house. I tell a nigga, yeah, we up with everything. I take everything I own to the plug. Okay. And investing in yourself. That's a hell of an investment. You take everything that's, you that's that's a form, that's a figure of speech. It means saying gamble on yourself. Right, that right. mean that's that that mean gamble on yourself. That mean don't be scared to go for broke for what you believe in, especially if something working for you. Like that mean to keep reinvesting into yourself. Like we up with everything. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people hustle scared. They move scared. Like hustle scared. Like move scared. Like you know, you me, I'm a risk taker. You know, and I'm not just saying on the illegal side. It's just period. You know what I'm saying? If I see something and I got a vision, I don't mind putting my putting whatever my dollar behind it. You know? heard? And you know, and um. So when I say re up with everything, that's that's a figure of speech. That's me telling telling the people to gamble on themselves and, and, and go for broke, go for what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you you said I think you followed that statement up with um it, it's good to dance to, but you wanted it to be motivation for people. Is that part of your goal with the music? You want to motivate uh, hustlers and rappers? I want to motivate people to better their situation, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? I want to motivate people to better their situation, to actually, you know, want to rise above their situation. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, I want them to think bigger and outside of the situation that they're in and know that they can do whatever the fuck they want, regardless. You know what I'm saying? So I make music to actually do that, to motivate people. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, that's my whole shit, man. You know, on top of the ball work, you know? And you, you got uh, too many bangers and memorable punchlines. Do you ever forget your rhymes? There's so many of them. Not really. You no, never, so on stage, never forgot? Nah, not on stage. I don't forget shit. Um, nah, man. The only time I ever forgot a rhyme is when I wrote it on the way in my head on the way to the radio station and shit. And then I went to try to spit that same ball. Oh, wow. Same balls. I just put them shits together. I'm on my way to the station. You know what I'm saying? And I probably, you know, I did that shit one time and shit. But usually, that never happens. Yeah. And you, you got stamps from, from, we talked about Pete Rock, DJ Premier. Um, you said that getting respect from those you admire was way more important than the money. Do you still feel like that? Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, that's really what it's about. You know what I mean? Is um, you being able to get respect from the people that you actually admire and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's what this shit is about. You know what I'm saying? The money gonna come. Like, when I first started doing this shit, I didn't. When I made Sonny G rap and shit, I wasn't thinking, like, I'm making this to make money. You know, I was making this because this was a project that you know, I was passionate about, and this was, I felt like his story, because this is my favorite rapper, and I'm dealing with my favorite producers and shit, like, as far as what it was going to do, you know, monetary wise, that wasn't important to me. So, you are probably one of the most prolific producers in hip-hop right now. You got so many albums out. Do you just have a vault full of beats, or is you like a human assembly line, just... Spitting them out. Man, I make them shit about a day. Four or five a day, sometimes ten a day. I get busy and shit. I done, man, I get busy, bro. I'm a machine. Like, I'm an animal inside the studio. Like, I'm like a robot. Like, I get them shit done. Like, it's kind of crazy, man. You know, you're watching me work, man. It's like I make a beat in five minutes. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. The whole beat. Yeah, like, it's Dude. crazy. The mystery school joint just came out. Um, Planet Asia. That's a first of all, Trust the Chain classic album. Um, I highlighted Appreciate that you. on my channel at one point. Um, the beat on on mystery that that beat is so crazy. Um, the video vibe is real nice on there. I don't know if you had anything to do with the video, but the beat is so polished. It's it's like an instant burning. In 1979, 
is what I feel like when I hear that beat. And they got like a 2020 like understanding to it. Um, I imagine that you and PA both learn something from each other. What, could you talk about what you learned about Planet Asia or what you might have learned from him? Man, I like Planet Asia work out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I deal with people that really get busy. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I learned a lot of a lot of jewels from PA. I mm. can say that. Mm. Being around PA, PA going to sit and build with you all day. You know what I'm saying? Like outside of the, outside of the music, he just gonna be sitting there building with you about life and the world and about you know history and just about you know it's just about the, the black man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, being around PA is dope and shit because it, it brings that balance to the studio and shit. Because PA always dropping jewels. You know what I'm saying? Always. Who reached out to who for that uh, Trust the Chain project? I reached out to PA. You know what I'm saying? He was in New York I, and, and all of this shit. And I pulled up on him and uh, I was like, man, let's knock this out. And then we start working and shit. You know what I'm saying? How long did it take to, for that album to come together? It didn't take, it didn't take long at all. It took a couple days. You know what I'm saying? For the whole like, album? Yeah, man. We knocked that shit out like in a week. You know what I'm saying? Dude, God. that album's so classic, bro. It's so classic. They got so many bangers on that. I couldn't believe it when I seen it. It just popped up out of nowhere. It's like Planet Asia and um, 38. I said, this can't be. And I had to bump that shit immediately. I think I, I was on live with the shit one day. I think me and my people listened to the whole damn album. Does working with a guy like Planet Asia make you focus harder um, or make you sharper? Because the beats on that album is real. They meticulous, the beats on that album. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I got definitely, man. Like, nah, man. It's it, 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 it. Like, it's not just. It's not just working with PA. Working with PA also, you know, helps me. Like, you know, in the way that it helps far as me, like focusing on beats that I feel as though fit him. But my production is just growing because I'm making so much. Yeah, you know? I'm making so much, so it's growing. So like all the projects that I'm putting out around this period of time. You're just going to hear the growth and shit, you know what I'm saying? In them, because I grew as a producer for me doing it so much in these last past, you know, six months. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, uh, like, are you involved with the mixes on these projects or you leave that to somebody else? I leave that to somebody else. Most of them is done by my homie Parks. Shout out to my homie Parks from Joe Button's podcast. Oh, Parks! I never, I don't think I ever seen dude face, but I always hear um, he getting shouted out on uh, on Joe Button. I fuck with the Joe Button podcast. Shout to Joe. Um, do you ever make beats with certain people in mind? Nah, I just wait till they done. Then I'll be like, oh, that sound like that could go for. After it's done, I'll be like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I wanna. I got a couple of questions that I guess is not as serious. They on this other sheet over here. And I want to ask, this is selfish on my part, your jacket game. I'll be seeing you in these jackets in these videos. <laughs> when did, have you always been known for that crazy jacket game? And you got some exclusive spot where you getting these from, like, Europe or some shit? Like, what's up with the jackets, man? Yeah, man, that's some shit that I always liked and shit, man. Since a kid and shit, I've been buying jackets and shit, man. I got, I was like a young nigga. Buying five, six thousand dollar jackets and shit. You know what I'm saying? As a kid and shit, like 19, 18 and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, <laughs> it was crazy because my friends ain't never understand it. They used to be like, man, why is you buying all of this old school, you know what I'm saying? Pimp shit, man. I'm like, man, I just like that shit, man. I just always like the exotic skins, man. Yeah. On the song Black Horn. Right. You touched on familiar topics from your music, fake broads. Uh, I feel like you're trying to warn cats uh, that foul women is just as damaging as uh, hating ass niggas. Can you speak on that? How that's a theme throughout your music? Uh, you know, man, I don't want to just speak on like, yeah, and just single the women out there, but foul people is foul people. 
Got you. <clears throat> I speak on disloyalty and betrayal a lot from both sides. Yes, yes. From both sides, you know what I'm saying? I speak on that because I dealt with it a lot, and it's, a, it's one of the most relatable topics that I have dealt with, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, I tell people just to learn from their relationships. I respect that. And the, the song Yesterday, That's so powerful. Bitch, you fuck with that, right? Oh, come That's on now. Shit. Hey, yo, that beat crazy, right? Come on, listen. That shit fire, bro. It's like you you do take a dude there, but you make it's like you know when you listen to Al Green and the way Al Green sing and he kind of just take you there. He make you feel what he feeling. That's when you get into these emotional uh, songs like this. I you taking me there. That that song talks about a breakup. Um, right. Do you still right. talk to the person that you made that song about? Do I? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> like nah, man. Am not really, no. Okay. Does that person know about this song? Of course. Okay. All right. <laughs> so stay on a personal note. You rap about your, your dad not being around. Um, how did that uh, affect your grind, him, him being absent? Uh, can you talk to the young ones out there who may not have a father around and, and, and talk to them about how you was able to keep your focus to get where you are right now? Well, I had to credit a lot of that to my mother, you know, rest her soul and shit, you know mm. what I'm saying? Um, she instilled in me and shit that I really ain't need no pops at an early age, mm. you know what I'm saying? And uh, looking back, you know, I realized that <clears throat> every boy does need a father, mm. you know what I'm saying? Or need some type of male role model, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, if you don't have that, you know, that doesn't determine your success or not. And there'd be a lot of us who don't have that, you know, we actually become, you know, the best fathers because we know what it's like not to have, you know, you know, our parents around and shit. So, you know, we, a lot of us, if we don't have that kind of support or them kind of support systems, end up being the strongest ones. And a lot of people who end up having crutches I'm not saying having parents is crutches, but having a lot of people having too much support can be a crutch sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people that have crutches, you know, is not in the best position. You know what I'm saying? And did and did that inform how you parented the fact that your father was not around? Did did that did that change your thought process on what it how important it was for you to be around your kids? Of course. You know what I'm saying? Of course, man. Um, you know, I encourage everybody out there to spend as much time with your kids as possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, it causes a major impact on their life and shit. And a lot of people probably ain't in the best financial situation and have a lot of excuses to blame shit, you know what I'm saying? Or have reasons not to come around, but you know, spending time with your kids is priceless. I'm actually with my children right now. That's why I told you, like, yo, hold up. Hold and up, so a song like By Myself sounds like you're talking from real pain. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, a, a theme that runs through your catalog is not asking for help from anybody uh, and sending messages to cats that kind of underestimated you. Uh, how personal is the music that you put out and, and how much of yourself? Hey, yo, you do a lot of research, man, and you really be listening. <laughs> I would have to say that, though. Fuck all that, though. <laughs> like, you really, really paying attention, though. And you really realize, like, a lot of this music is personal. Yeah. Yeah. It's personal. Yeah. Like, I, like, that's all I know how to do is just, like, pull from a certain place, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's very personal, man, and that's why it's so relatable. But I appreciate the fact that you understand that. No, but I, mean, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate thank you. That, you, that you that you songs like yesterday and shit like that you connect with. You know what I'm saying? No, but I mean, I, I thank you for giving me that compliment, but I got to thank you, and I'm sure I'm speaking for a lot of people, that thank you for bringing this shit to the forefront. Like, imagine if you didn't realize what your gift was and we would have been deprived of this shit. So let me just say this because I'll be on my show and I'll, I'll talk shit 
And I'll say it while you're here right now. So the voice is, is fucking one of a kind voice. The bars, I've, I said, you can't be better than this dude. You can only be as good as this dude. And then you make the beats. Then you put the feeling into it. Then you bring the streets to it. We owe you a debt of gratitude for uh, bringing that hard knock shit back to the forefront. Um, so my hat's off to you, sir. I just got to say that. Um, and how much of yourself are you willing to show to your people? Nah, you know, that's a real shit. Like, you got to realize, man, I'm very vulnerable in my music and very honest. You know what I'm saying? I speak about my ups and my downs and my, you know, all of that, my wins and my losses. I have no no, no problem with being transparent. You know what I mean? Um, I do that to motivate the motherfucker that's going through those things mm. because I overcame everything I experienced. Mm. You heard? Yeah. Just like I, Vent. I, I, Vent is no, one of them songs, dude. You like go oh in. Oh, my God. Bro, man, listen, listen. That's crazy. See, like, see, see, I'm speaking to somebody that, 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 that really listened to my music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, nah, that's the shit I'm talking about. Like, vent in it. That was so deep when I first, because I had heard so much of your street shit. You was, you was spitting that, that live ass street shit. And I came across the vent shit. I'm like, oh, this dude go deep. This dude really telling you about, like, when you say vulnerable, yeah, that's real talk. That's exactly, that was, Vit was the first one where I, where I heard you be vulnerable, and I didn't even know you had that in your bag. That's much appreciated. Let's go to Block Food. Cash with us. Man, look. Young okay. boy, man. Young, 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 hungry. Young, hungry boy, man. It's so yeah, dope, man. man. The video is so lit. Where was that, where was that video shot at? That's what in point? Rochester. Okay. Okay. And it's, it's, it's Pooh from Rochester? Definitely. Okay. And I, I, I need to, I know it's uh, way down on my list of questions, but I want to ask it now because it's in my mind. Talk to me. Pooh sounds so good on the track. Oh my God, the beat. I listen to that song so fucking much. I just watched the video too because the aesthetics is crazy. Listen, like, do people that you work with, do you find that they sound better over your production? Is your hands in the mix like that? Are you coaching them along? Because I find I hear people on... Now, let me explain to you what happens is this. You want to know the secret to that? I'm about to tell you right now. Yes. You never had a producer that's sitting there recording you that's nice as me. That mm. never happened before in hip-hop. So you don't got a nigga that's actually making the beat that's sitting behind the boards, pressing the boards while you go in the booth. But now when you go in the booth, you can't play at all because this ain't just no producer pressing the buttons. <laughs> this a nigga that really know how to rap that's pressing the buttons. Wow. So you got a whole different kind of energy and, and a different kind of, you, you like, oh, nah, I can't even play because, you know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? So 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 every time I work with somebody, it's, it's not just the me producing, it's, it's the rapper in the room too. You know what I mean? That, 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 that one, of, you know, one of them niggas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they like, you know, I got to do what I do. You know what I'm saying? So everybody is coming with that shit. You know what I'm saying? They Dude. coming with that shit. Pooh spazzed the fuck out on that cut. Spazzed on that cut, dude. I just can't get it over it. it. But then you come through that bitch like a tree, like a tree shredder on that bitch. That nigga, yeah, man. I'm gonna make a meal out this motherfucking pot too. Dude. And you said in my <laughs> and, and it's cocaine in my console and my apostle oh is feeds with million dollar nostrils. Facts. <laughs> you believe what your mind choose, but I refuse to worship a man the color of Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Nah, my nigga. That was crazy. <laughs> Yo, that's what I'm saying. That but you got so crazy. many classic quotables. It's uh, way too many. It's way the verse you did with A Z. On oh, honest oh, truth, man. Honest truth was crazy, bro. Quotables though, like nah, nah, man, nah. The whole thing quotable. Nah, the whole shit though, man. like the whole shit, like that shit was crazy. Bro. I had to say to my girl, cause my girl don't listen to too much rap, right? I mean, she a special right. fan. Um, it, just based off of honest truth, because she like it so much. I don't know if it's the video that does it for her or what the fuck. But I said <laughs> when I first heard it. I said, did you hear what he just said right there? She's like, nah. I'm like, yo, he said, I'm isolated. And you said something about, uh, I'm a slither in your place, even if you build a fence. I said, did you Back. hear what he said? 
I'm see, isolated and militant, but a snake can slither in your place even if you build a fence. I'm dealing with some real events. Them folks heard I was eating, and they've been on my heels since. I know the verse, bro. <laughs> but I not the <laughs> when it's 10 bricks in the whip with the same oh, shit that killed Prince. That's how I turn people on to Spesh. When I say I've got to turn them on to, I, I play that verse, and we get that's to that smart. part. <laughs> How could I not feel tense when it's 10 bricks of the whip of the same shit that kill Prince? Then I got to stop. I said, no, now what? And they're like, that's okay, a, yes. And then they start listening a, to the special. That's a good representation. It hurt. That's a good, good, good introduction right there. It go good. It go hard in the car, too. God damn. Shout out to my nigga Midnight, man. Like I said, that was one, my boy Midnight. He did the intro on Son of G Rap album, and he did that beat right there, Honest Truth. Like, like that's one of the producers I grew up with. That was one of the reasons why I ain't take producers serious, because he was so crazy. I just was like, fuck it, I'm going to rap on your shit. You know what I mean? Like, fact, though. So shout out to him. That nigga's can, crazy. Can we get, a, can we get a, a whole album with you and AZ, please? Is that possible? Oh, man. You know what? That, uh, that sounds like, sound like something crazy. The game need that five shots. Five shots. Is all Mike Tyson power punches. The whole damn thing. Uh, and um, it's, it's a classic. You only got a few features on there, but what I appreciate about that album is that you carry the project on the strength of you. Um, your stamp is all over the project. Are, are you conscious of that when you're making it, that the, the project is being defined by you? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm conscious of that. And and I work fast, man. Like I said, I'm all off energy. I did five shots in about five days, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I made the beat and I recorded each one of them joints. I was like, gonna make the beat and rap to it every day. And I had that shit done in less than a week. You know what I'm saying? My guy is so classic. Um, so That's you beat my shit, man. I ain't gonna lie. That's my shit. My dude, uh, Matt Stacks, was asking about See, he he co-hosts a show called Expensive Conversation with me. He's he wanted to know when is six shots coming. Six shots is done. The coronavirus slowed me down and shit. Um six shots is either, is gonna come in a couple weeks, man. No in the next thirty days, six shots is coming. Oh, I love that. Exclusive coming. Hey, so your beats have an interesting quality where they knock but keep a soulful sprinkle to it. Um, it's the shit that make people feel. Do you think, uh, do you think in terms of what your audience wants to hear in terms of how their ear is acting, or do you concentrate more on what pleases your ear when you're making these beats? Oh, yeah, I, I'm thinking about what I feel when I make these beats, and they got to touch my soul and make me want to rap on the motherfucker. And then, uh, you know, I know if I'm feeling it, then the people going to feel it. But I'm making the beats like, okay, I feel that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like... I make that shit personally, like I'm real personal with it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Real talk. I like, yeah, I like to capture emotion a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm really about capturing emotion, so I, I aim for shit that I feel. You know? So if you were uh, stranded on a desert island, you could only take three albums. What would those albums be? I'm not going to include none of my shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the first one would be Life After Death. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, the second one would be Blueprint. Mm. The third one would be It Was Written. Oh, my and God. It was written. If I could sneak forward in there, it would be my deep learning music. But, you know, a lot of motherfuckers go with Infamous and shit. Mm -hmm. right? But Murder Music, just it was more of a soundtrack to my life. Mm. So, you know, I need to throw that in there as well somewhere. So I need four albums on my island. I got I got you four. Uh when you when you unwind and you rolling that fat L, you chilling at the house, what's your go to chill out hip hop? The shit that make you think and relax. Man, that would be motherfucking. That would have to be like some early Nas. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some J. Cole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I can't 
can't really think, man. I don't really get a chance of listening to much classic music nowadays. I spend so much time working. You, know you mess saying? with R and B? You still you listen to some R and B when you chill out? Oh man, I love R and B, man. I love like nineties R and B and shit, like Silk and Shy and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep sweating, motherfucking shit like that. I'm more of a nineties type of motherfucker and shit, you know. Are your kids aware that you are 38 special? Do they understand what your significance is? I have no fucking clue I'm 38 special. I be trying to tell they little asses. <laughs> they got no fucking clue, bro. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know that. You got fans all over the world that's waiting for you to drop? No, I don't think they know that, man. I don't think they know what that shit. They going to realize that shit. Now, my son, now on some real shit, though, my son, he, uh, I th he he realized it because they're a little older and shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like my daughters, they know what I do for a living, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, sometimes we just, I mean, I got a, I got a child myself. He's a little bit on, on, the, on the older side. He's not a young boy no more. But you always want to, for some reason, as parents, we want our kids to look up to us and just be like, oh, that my dad, he a beast. You know what I mean? And, you know, right. they, they be trying to please us, but we be also trying to please them at the same time. You know, but when I was growing up, uh, my dad and my mom didn't give a fuck if they was pleasing me. <laughs> I mean, that's the right. they was so on. I better make them happy. But, you know, looking back, it's like, now nah, I want to make my son, like, like proud of me. Is Flea Lord always on go? I mean, is he, is he the kind of dude that you got to, like, you got to have a team around him when you go to the club because he just might take off on somebody? Because he seemed to be, I be on his IG, I be on his lives, man. He be lit, man. <laughs> yeah, that's my nigga. Flea always ready. <laughs> yeah, her fleet energy is at a, 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 a all time high, all yeah. the time. And Duke can spit. Dude got them bars. He got a voice. Speaking of voices, G Four Jag. This dude sound. His voice sound like a twenty foot tall super villain. That's what he sound yeah. like. Bars top notch. Uh, have you known him long? And, and, and what? Who is the dude I met, behind I the met, voice? I met. I met G. I met G through Fleet. G mad cool man. You know, good brother man. You know, Flea actually introduced me to G, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I knew him for, you know, not that long, but, you know, we've been putting in a lot of work since we've been around each other. Okay. You got to choose one. You with your woman. You playing some music. You got to choose one. Charlie Wilson or Keith Sweat? Keith Sweat. <laughs> Keith Sweat. Definitely Uncle Charlie don't get no love, though. Nah, Charlie, Charlie was a little bit before my day, man. I'm going with Keith Sweat before... Charlie and I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know if you want to answer this question or not, but I, I feel like I'm going to ask a real nigga because um, it's a conversation that kind of goes around hip-hop and it's always in my head. Is there a place <laughs> in hip-hop for male rappers wearing dresses? So as an example, a guy like Yachty, he had a video <laughs> where he was dressed like Oprah, but a whole video, which means that he was dressed up like Oprah for three days, okay? We talk about wig, dress, stockings, lipstick, eyeliner, heels. Is it a place for that in hip hop? Of course not. Not in the hip hop that I, I listen to and shit. You know what I'm saying? Got you. I don't. That's not. I, you know, a place for that in, in hip hop. I don't know what I'm stuck, man. I feel like certain genres of that sh of music should have they certain kind of rap should have their own genres. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm not saying I don't fuck with all music. I fuck with all music. But I don't think we should categorize everything that's the right. same thing. I don't think a motherfucker with lyrics should be in the same category as Lil Yachty. Do you? Come on now. First no, of all, I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying anything wrong with any of that kind of music. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think that they should be in the same category as the spitters. I mean, this ain't special, and this is me saying it. I mean, and it ain't the first time I said it on, on my platform. Y'all niggas ain't spitters. So quit saying y'all the best at this and that just because the industry is overlooking the real shit. You know what I mean? But we bringing it back uh, with the help of uh, such illuminaries like uh, 38 Special. So I'm saying it. that We're going to call that shit weirdo rap from now on. Um, who is there anybody out there that you really want to work with that you have not worked with yet? Nah, fuck everybody, man. Fuck them all, man. Man, fuck them all. 
like fucking with the team and the niggas that surround me and the motherfuckers that's respecting what I'm doing. You know what I mean? But I ain't really checking for nobody. I got the best niggas around me. You heard? I definitely agree with that sentiment right there. You you work so much. Do you ever get tired? Or is there now a certain urgency to this moment? People starting to pay more attention to you. You feel like you got to strike with the iron's hot. I'm just working. I'm just doing what I do. People pay attention. They throwing us all good. We're going to keep giving them music and keep doing what we do. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no time limit on this shit that I'm doing. You heard? That's what's up. It's this shit gonna be dope 10 years from now, 20 years from now. These events that I'm talking about still gonna be relatable. And the balls are still gonna be crazy. They still gonna have to be wild the shit that I say. Do we got, you got any new videos coming out that I could be on the lookout for? Or we talked about six shots is coming pretty soon. What, what can we be on the lookout for from Spech? Y'all could expect, y'all could expect, um, I can expect a bunch of motherfucking videos coming from all six shots. I'm shooting a video to every joint. I got most of them shot already and shit. I'm about to start the rollout soon, so y'all could definitely expect that, you know? That's what's up. And then one more question, because when people – I don't really buy merch. I just started buying a couple pieces from people who I like and respect. Um, and I, I think last time I checked yours, it was sold out. Um, do you make 3X – Trust hoodies and t-shirts, the black and white joints. We we'll start. You heard? <laughs> we about to start right now. Yeah, I need all, to copy. I need all the three X's, all the three X's out there. I'm about to get that together for y'all. Yeah, I need to cop. Real talk. And then you, as boxers like to say, you in the best shape of your life right now. You know, back in the day, you you had a few more pounds on you. What what's the secret? Because I'm trying to take off like fifty myself. Listen, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I changed my diet and shit, and I stopped eating all the bullshit. But every once in a blue, like, I relapsed. Like, I've been eating a little bullshit throughout the summer, doing a little drinking. But I had completely cut out alcohol and completely cut out all bad food. Like, I went completely vegan at one point. You know what I'm saying? On top of me, I did. I lost weight a couple different ways. First off, I lost weight from exercise, and that was the first time. And then I stopped exercising and gained it back. Mm -hmm. Then I lost weight from I went. I just completely went vegan, and I lost a lot of weight fast and shit. And you know, I just started being real conscious of what I was eating and putting in my body, and it didn't come back like how it did when I was exercising and just eating whatever I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, so um, diet, diet is the secret, man. Diet, being conscious of what you eat, right? It's really the secret. That's really all it is. If you could stay away from meat, you know, if you could fast, or you know, if you could go a certain period of time just without eating meat, you know, you know, at least a good thirty days or something like that. I know it may sound hard, but it's a bunch of different recipes you can figure out. You know what I'm saying? To really, you know, cleanse your body and drink a lot of water. Water. Yeah. People, a lot of people think it's more than what it is, but what really the key is just diet, man. Drink a lot of water, man, and, and, and eat a lot of vegetables. I respect the gyms. We need those. And, um, you know, before I let you go, I, put in the word. I hope you can put in the word for Shay. One day I want to sit down and talk to her because I know she right. got a hell of a story. Um, and I think more people need to hear from her because um, I think she's just so important to the culture right now. Um, right. And I, I want to thank you for allowing me the honor to sit and talk to an artist of, of your high caliber. It was, it's a moment for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that you was able to, to share this uh, amount of time with me and bless the platform and my subscribers and my family with this real in-depth interview. I certainly appreciate it, Spesh. Thank you. Man, I appreciate you having me, man. I appreciate you paying attention. And with some good-ass questions that you asked me, man, you know, showed me that you was really in tune to the music. Yes, sir. Word up, man. I appreciate you having me. So hopefully, you know, six months, year from now, maybe we'll be able to do this again. I hope to have you back and uh, nah. and expand on this conversation at some point in the future. I'm here, man. I'm here, bro. We're going to do this again, definitely. Word up. I'm in your IG, too. Y'all know you don't really be answering niggas like that, but I'm going to still, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend like I know your love, maybe like good interview in the DM, and I hope I get, <laughs> get some back. Good looking, yeah. man.
<laughs> I, appreciate I appreciate you, brother. Support, Th- bro. Thank you once again. Uh, I want you to have a, a nice rest of your day, brother. Peace to you. Yo, you have a nice day, my brother.